All right. So this is going to be a review of conductivity of solutions. This is one thing that we have continued to struggle with in class, and I want to make sure that you guys have an opportunity to slow down the video, really try to grasp what it's talking about. Perhaps I cover it too fast in class. I'll take the fall for this either way, um, but we've got to be better. So hopefully you um, will be able to follow the video, take notes if you need, but ultimately just watch it at your speed, please, if you need to watch it over and over again. I want you to feel comfortable doing that. So let's first clear up what conductivity is. Conductivity is a measure of how well a solution or a material conducts electricity. How well a material, and in our case, a solution conducts electricity. Some substances conduct electricity better than others. So when we think about conductivity of solutions, we want to kind of break this apart into strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, and non-electrolytes. So there are going to be strong electrolytes. There's going to be weak electrolytes, and then there's going to be non-electrolytes. Strong electrolytes are substances that fully dissolve when placed in a solution. So these are uh, substances that fully, fully dissolve. Remember the fancy word that we want you to remember is ionize. In a solution. So there's three types of strong electrolytes that we want you guys to remember. The three examples of them are ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are salts. Then there are strong acids. You don't need to memorize these, so I'm not going to list them. And there's strong bases. Again, you don't need to know these, so I'm not going to list them. So we're going to use an ionic compound because I'm pretty sure that's the one you guys would have to recognize on an exam. So let's imagine that this was a beaker. You guys already know I'm not the best artist. So it's going to be filled just with some plain distilled water. And we're going to drop in some, um, some salt, some NaCl. So NaCl, our first thought when you see that is, how do I know that it's an ionic compound? Sodium is a metal. It's a positively charged ion if it's dissolved. It's called a cation. And then chlorine is a negative ion. It's called an anion. It's a nonmetal. So it's going to be negatively charged. So when we drop sodium in, sodium is going to dissolve as positive. I'm actually going to get rid of these blue lines. This is going to create some confusion. So sodium is going to be the black circles. These are going to dissolve as positive ions. And then you're going to have chlorine. We'll make chlorine red. Chlorine's going to dissolve as negative ions. So why this is conductive for electricity is because in between the positive and negatives, I want you to imagine that water is in between these as a molecule. So water is found as H2O in between here, H2O. Okay, it's sandwiching itself between these, ionizing them, creating positive and negative charge. So the electrical, or the possibility to conduct electricity comes from the separation of charge between positive and negative ions. This is called an electric potential. That means we have the potential to conduct electricity. 
and thus it would do so if an electric current was introduced through some type of probe or in the case of like lightning in an ocean, something along those lines, it has the potential to conduct electricity. So that's strong electrolytes. These fully dissolve, they are always going to be the best conductors of electricity. Weak electrolytes, these partially dissolve. Or ionize. In solution. These are only two types. They're uh, weak acids or weak bases. That's it. There's no other type. So an easy example of a weak acid would be acetic acid. It would be H, C2, H3, O2. So let's pretend that we dropped some acetic acid into the solution. So again, let me get my blue. We're going to make hydrogen the positive color again, so we'll stick with black. So we're going to have positive hydrogen, positive hydrogen, and then you're going to have a negative ion. That's going to be the acetate ion in this case. But the difference here is some ionize, but most of it doesn't. Most of it stays together. So if that's true, then you're going to have black, and you're going to have red circles stuck together. And if they're stuck together, they do not conduct electricity. Those are non-conductors because they don't carry a charge. They're not ionized. Those positive and negative charges are the ones that are ionized. They have gained or lost electrons. I'm sorry, they haven't gained or lost electrons. They've been separated by water, creating what appears to be an electric potential. So again, you have an electric potential here but this is it. In our drawing, we only have a couple of locations where an electric potential could be produced. So that's why these are still conductors, but they are weaker because they only have certain molecules that have ionized in the solution. Non-electrolytes um, do not dissolve as ions. They stay as molecules. So the best example I can think of for this is any covalent compound, and you guys might see it on a test or a quiz, written as a generic molecule. We typically use the word molecule to describe a covalent compound. So these non-electrolytes, the best example I could give you guys is sugar. Um, and sugar has this formula of C6H12O6. We'll call it the basic glucose sugar. So if we were to dissolve some sugar into our solution of water, it's not going to dissolve as individual components. It's only going to stay together. So in terms of the black and the red, it's just going to be black and red throughout our solution. It does not ionize. And if it does not ionize, it does not conduct electricity. So these do not ionize. So there's no potential. to conduct. So hopefully you guys find that to be helpful to you. The, uh, the conductivity, a quick review of that, and a quick review of the electrolytes. Remember on the test, you guys will probably just need to recognize strong electrolytes and non-electrolytes. I doubt that you have to know weak electrolytes, but I still wanted to review it in case it does pop up. So make sure that you guys remember for strong electrolytes, the main one to focus on are ionic compounds, and those are salts. And the non-electrolytes, those are covalent molecules. And, and you know that they're covalent because they contain non-metals. So you would grab your periodic table and you would make sure they're to the right of the staircase. And if they are a non-electrolyte, they will not conduct electricity. Hopefully this helps us understand these a bit better. I'll see you guys soon.